for power. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Um, we ready? All right, go. Hallelujah. And welcome to Expedition Church. Uh, we're excited to have you with us. Praise God. Little techno issues getting started tonight. So um, we apologize for being a little late. We were trying something new, and so we had to um, make an adjustment. But praise the Lord. It's, it's all good. Everybody say, it's all good. It's all good. Hallelujah. We've been uh, continuing in our series, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption by E.W. Kenyon. Uh, on the website, uh, there's a link from the uh, Expedition uh, Church website at Expedition Triad. I believe it is, um, where you can order this book. It takes you right straight to Amazon, takes you to the page. You can uh, dial it right up and order it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, um, you know, if you need it, get it. It's th I think $13.99 online, something like that. Oh, it works like a real television studio. The red lights go back and forth. Oh, All right, hallelujah. I remember my first time on television, I said, now, watch the red light. You're like, no, we don't want you doing that. Act natural. <laughs> hallelujah. That was a long time ago. I was a lot younger. Hallelujah. Um, last couple of weeks, we studied um, our identification with Christ. <clears throat> this week, we move into the name of Jesus. Praise God. Can you say Amen. You know, in having been identified with Christ and becoming a new creature in Christ, um, and Jesus being the first one raised from the dead, and being the firstborn among many brethren, et cetera, and, and so forth, and we've been raised up with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places. And we talked about how he had taken and obtained all authority in heaven and earth. Amen. Actually, he, he took all authority of heaven, earth, and hell. He possesses all authority. Amen. Amen. And liberated man from Satan's dominion over him. Glory to God. Now, uh, without going into a whole lot of detail, Satan still has the right to be the God of this world for a season until Adam's lease runs out. And that's, that's more explanatory. We need more explanation than we're going to be able to give you tonight on that. Um, however, anyone who's in, in Jesus is liberated from all of Satan's authority. He has no authority over them in any realm whatsoever. Praise God. And um, our spirit is what receives this new creation. Your mind did not get born again. There's no such thing as a born again mind. Anybody know what we, our minds get? Renewed. What happens to our bodies? They get glorified at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the rapture of the church. All right. And until then, we have a promissory note on the purchased possession. We can have health and healing and soundness of our bodies. Some folks, some folks are so uh, determined that sickness is from God. If you can't get sick, how are you going to die? You know, you could die like they did in the Old Testament. Call the kids in. They would lay them up, line them up. They got down the line, let, bless them or curse them, depending on how they're living, go put their feet up and die. Smith Wigglesworth, um, the day he went home, he went to breakfast and told everybody, said, I'm going home today. And they thought he'd gone see now. Well, you are home. They said, no, I'm going home. Uh, finished his breakfast, walked down the hall, got in his rocking chair and went home. Praise the Lord. Dad Hagen had always said, that the um, best way to die is get up, have your favorite breakfast, and um, then just go home and be with Jesus. Well, he had, the, the, Dr. Jerry Horton had come over and um, had breakfast, and she cooked his favorite dessert, which was strawberry cream. Made a strawberry dessert. He made, and he had after breakfast, ate, uh, was eating that, looked over at Sister Aretha and dropped his head. Now, they called 911, the ambulance came, and the only reason that they got a, a pulse back at all was that the EMT were, were Raymond grads. And they wouldn't let him go. 
And they worked on him and worked on him and worked on him and worked on him. 45 minutes at the house. You know, and they got some kind of pulse or something that took him to the hospital. He never came out. I remember Pat, uh, Pastor talking about he went in, came out and talked to Sister Pat and said, he's gone. And she said, I know it, he's gone. And they just let him, they let, they let him go. But the only reason he, he, he wasn't pronounced dead there was his Raymond grass just wouldn't do it. And they said, no, we can't let dad go. <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, he, exactly the way he said it, the best way to go was. Hallelujah. Um, Brother Summerall um, said something along this lines in his pulpit. He said, the ministry's paid for, Evangeline, the cargo ship he used for Feed the Hungry, it's paid for. The C-130 cargo plane, it's paid for. He said, I'll see you on the other side. He was gone the next week. Last sermon he preached. Hallelujah. Well, how do you, how, how do you die without being sick? You just go home. I say, you just go home. Amen. Hallelujah. And so our bodies are having, yeah, I know it. Praise God. I've, I've, I've dealt with death. I remember going in with Sister Herndon. And, um, you know, she's in the hospital. She had gone into a, you know, she had just, you know, and I could never get her in the positive. But she would, uh, now, Pastor, you know, one of these days, now, Sister Herndon, now you got to get that over. I know it. I know it. You know, and she'd get over there for a minute or two, but then she'd just, next time we talked to her, she'd gone right back. But uh, she was, she'd gone into a, a coma and went into the hospital and the whole family was there and I'm, I'm, I'm there with her. I said, um, I said, guys, you, you're going to just let her go. They, they all agree. They said, we need to let her go. I said, okay. So I leaned over and prayed for her. I said, now, Sister Herndon, this is pastor. I said, now. Uh, so and so's here. So and so's here. You know, the whole, I said. Now they all they all agree it's time to let you let you go home. I said. Now we love you. We bless you. We're going to just see you on the other side. And said. So just lean back. Just lean back in there and let her go. And I walked out the door. And I walked about ten steps down the hall. And Stephanie came running down the hall behind me. Pastor Ed. Pastor Ed. Pastor Ed. She's gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Um, the story they tell about Sister Wilkerson was, I don't know why I'm over here on this, but she, uh, she had gotten to a point, she had lapsed into a coma at the hospital, said so she popped up in bed and went, go get David Ingalls, I must tell him something. And she sat there for like, they took them like three hours or so to find Brother David and get him up to the hospital. And she's talking to the nurses and talking to people and carrying on. He walked in the room, she prophesied to him, fell out and never came back. I said, now think about that. How strong the spirit is over the, over the body where it can pop up and say, I got to prophesy to somebody before I leave. Yeah. Glory to God. And just carry on a conversation and then go home. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. <clears throat> There's power. This human spirit has power. Amen. And so, um, you know, we're, we, we, we've received glorified bodies at the return of the Lord, but in the meantime, we have the promise of the purchased possession. Amen. Glory to God. Um, Colossians 1.13 says that we were delivered out of the power, authority of darkness, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, or the son of his love, as one translation says. The nature of God, the very nature of God was imparted in your spirit when you were born again. Hallelujah. You became alive unto God. You walked in a whole new sphere altogether. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. And we take our place as, uh, as begotten sons of God, heirs of God, and join heirs with Jesus Christ. First, uh, First John 5, 1, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is begotten of God. First John 5, 12, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The person that became a new creature has become a child of God and a joint heir with Christ. Romans 8, 16 and 17, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. So now we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. 
Remember, we've been raised up together with him and made to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that position is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are translated out of Satan's authority. <clears throat> and though we still live in a fallen world, we are not under his domain. Amen. 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 And so the question begs, the, what's the purpose or the need of the name of Jesus? Well, because 2 Corinthians 4, 4 calls Satan the God of this world, whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them. Ephesians 2, 2, he's called the prince of the powers of the air, wherein we once walked according to the prince of the powers of the air of the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Jesus called him the prince of the world. Satan and his forces still have an opportunity to work and to attack the child of God through temptations and trials. The very air of balance is filled with hostile forces that are attempting to destroy our fellowship with the Father and deprive us of our usefulness in the master's service. Now, they don't have authority to do it, but they're attempting. They just didn't kill it, quit. They didn't lay down and roll over and play dead. The Father, in his provision, has given us a weapon to use to combat, com combat. combat with Satan, not only for ourselves, but also for Satan-ruled men around us. That weapon's the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, how did Jesus get his name? How did his name become authoritative or powerful? Amen. How did his name become authoritative or powerful? Because we say, you know, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Meaning that name's above, and, you know, for God has highly exalted him and given unto him a name that is above every name. Yes. How did that name become so powerful? Well, number one, um, the authority is invested in that name. He inherited the name. Amen. He conquered the enemy. And so by conquest, amen, and then it was conferred or bestowed upon him. Love that old David Engel song. He acquired his name by inheritance, divinely begotten of love. Amen. And then, you know, I'm not that great. David's hard to sing. He, he carries some kind of um, different notes because he's got that kind of country twang mixture with that, whatever he does. I'm not sure what it is. Powerful. May not be your style, but it's powerful. Some of the most powerful music that's ever been written uh, in, this, in our generation. Today. Those songs, he, you know, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I've been born again. That's who I am. How about that? I am healed. I am whole. From the top of my head to the soul to the tip. Those are all David Engel songs. I'm of the seed of Abraham. And his blessings rest on me. All David Engel. There's a whole lot of people going home. By the signs of time, it won't be long. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be gone. There's a whole lot of people going home. Hallelujah. And we'll take more with us. Yeah. We're going to take more with us. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We cannot measure the vastness of the power of the name of Jesus when, um, when we realize that he inherited his name from God, the creator. It's, it's so immeasurable. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, I mean, 1, 2, and 4. God, who at the end of these days spoke to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, who being the effluence, <laughs> effluence, 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 
That's one of them words I'm the I'm effulgence. I can tell you what it means in, in the Greek. It means outshining the glory. Okay? Uh, the outraying of his glory. And the very image of his substance. Sat down at the right hand of the majesty on the high. Uh, having become so much better than the angels. As he, by, he hath inherited a more excellent name than they. He inherited his name. As the one who's the very image of God's substance. He was, he was the outshining and heir of all things. He inherited his name, the greatness of his name from his father. The power of his name then can only be measured by the power of God. Hallelujah. We can only measure how powerful the name is by measuring it against the power of God. Hallelujah. What did the Bible say? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Think about the power it took for God the Father to raise Jesus from the dead. And that power was released in Jesus when he raised him from the dead. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And because of that, God, he, even, he inherited a name. <clears throat> in that working, in that, in that process of raising him up as the first begotten from the dead, the firstborn of many brethren, he inherited a name that was greater than every other name. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you, you tell me, tell you something, baby. Demons tremble. At the sound of that name, they still remember Jesus put them to shame. All hell must um, tremble at the sound of that name. Heaven stands at attention when I mention that name. David Ingalls. Another. It's another one. We're going to the Ingalls roll tonight. Hallelujah. Secondly, he received the authority in his name by his conquest. He done whooped the devil. Amen. He put a whooping on him. The devil still remembers it. Well, he's walking around kind of cockeyed, buck tooth, and you know, with the shakes. I mean, you just mentioned the name of Jesus. The devil, what? Is he, is he back? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews, I mean, Colossians 2.15, having despoiled, <laughs> I look, these, these uh, translations that came, and some of them are, are virtual that he wrote. Having despoiled the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, interesting thing, when he translated despoiled, King James says, having spoiled principalities. That word used in classical Greek was used uh, to describe the Roman soldiers defeating another nation. And when they spoiled their enemy, they would go into the town and they would kill off, you know, the majority of the warriors, but the mightiest of them, they would not. And they would take them and they would put them in carts and then they would take them out of the carts and they would drag them through the streets by the hair of their head, making them, putting them on display that your mightiest, your strongest, your most powerful have been spoiled, have been defeated. You are a conquered people. You're a conquered nation. And they would do that to enforce that into the people's mind. They're a defeated people. And Jesus, after he hurled back principalities and powers, went out to the devil and spoiled him, made a show of him openly and drug him through the corridors of hell, their mighty man, their mighty valor, their mighty captain, stripped them of his crown of glory, stomped his head in and drug the mighty one through hell and, 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 and declared, I am he that was dead and now I'm alive and had the keys of death and of hell and I'm alive forevermore, glory to God. And I got all authority. Yeah. And of course the demons are over there in the corners going, Boss, you lied to us. You told us you told us you were going to win this thing. Uh-huh. 
So the picture here of Christ being in awful combat with the host of darkness gives us a glimpse of the tremendous victory he won before he rose from the dead. The margin of this verse reads, having put off from himself the principalities and powers. Uh, like I said, one translation says, hurled back. I, I just, I always get this image of a pinball machine. A demon here, a demon there. Bing, 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 bing. Just bouncing off the walls of hell. You know, I mean, Darth Vader has nothing on Jesus. Just picking, you know, picking them up, you know, and they're choked. Jesus just hurling them all over the place. Glory to God. It is evident that the whole demon host, when they saw Jesus within their power, simply intended to swamp him, overwhelm him, and hold him in fearful bondage until the cry came forth, until the cry came forth from the throne that Jesus had met the demands of justice, that the sin problem was settled, and man's redemption was a fact. And this cry reached the dark regions. Jesus arose hurled back the host of demons and met Satan in awful combat as described in Hebrews 2.14 in the English Bible, uh, the EBR. I'm not sure, the English basic reader or something. In order that through death he might paralyze him. Oh, I love that. In order that through death he might paralyze him that held dominion of death, that is the adversary. He held him, What? He might paralyze. He paralyzed the devil. Paralyzed, paralyzed. Jesus won the battle. Satan was. Well, Satan lost the fight. The enemy is conquered, restoring every right. Satan has been paralyzed. Guess who? David Ingalls. <laughs> In other words, after Jesus put off from himself the demon forces and the awful burden of guilt, sin, and sickness, which he carried with him down there, he grappled with Satan, conquered him, left him paralyzed, whipped, and defeated. In John, Luke 11, 21 and 22, when the strong man fully armed uh, guardeth his own court, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him his whole armor wherein he trusted and divides his spoils. When Jesus rose up from the dead, not only did he have the keys of death and of hell, he had the very arm in which Satan trusted, which was man's authority. He had defeated the devil, defeated all of hell, stood before three worlds, heaven, earth, and hell, as the undisputed champion of the universe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. As the undisputed victor over man's ancient destroyer conquer Satan and his cohorts hallelujah and he stood as absolute victor and master hallelujah is it any wonder that fresh from such victors he would go to his disciples and say all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth as he stands as the master and the ruler of the universe all this authority over Satan's dominion is now invested in that name. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Amen? Therefore, you go, and in my name, he turned it over to the church as the conqueror. I said, as the conqueror, glory to God. And this greatness of his name was conferred upon him and bestowed upon him. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 Wherefore God hath, hath highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth and things under the earth. Better translated beings. Amen. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now let me say something here. There is coming a day there is coming a time when Satan and all of hell will bow before the throne of God and open their mouth and say, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Right before they're cast into the second death. Every tongue will confess. I say, are you here? Yeah. Every tongue will confess. 
that Jesus is Lord. This is why we got to get the people down because they're going to confess it one way or the other. They're going to confess it here or they're going to confess it there. There won't work. It won't get them out of hell. Hello. So that's why we have a mission. We have a job. We have, we, have a, we have a demand from the master. We got to get the gospel out. Can you say amen? I said, we got to get the gospel out. Hallelujah. It's got to go into the earth. It's got to go to humanity. We've got to reach people's lives and get the gospel and get the truth into them. Hallelujah. All right. So the inference here was the name known in heaven, unknown elsewhere, and that this name was kept to be conferred upon someone who would merit it. And Jesus, as we know him, the eternal son, as he is known in the bosom of the father, was given this name. And this name, every knee bows in the three worlds, heaven, earth, and hell. Every angel bows their knee. Are you here? Every, every archangel, every cherubim, hello, every, every spirit being bows in honor and submission to the power of the name. Glory to God. And every conf tongue confesses he is Lord. He is the victor. He's the, he's the master of all circumstances. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So why was it given? Jesus has that name. That name's all powerful. Why was it given? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. God says, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Acts 13, 33. That, the, that God has fulfilled, this same, uh, fulfilled the same in that he raised up Jesus as it is written in the second Psalm, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Notice that Acts makes it very clear that when it says God said that this, thou art my beloved son, this day have I begotten thee. It is not talking about some time in the past before earth where he was, became the only begotten son. It says here, um, in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, in relation to raising him up from the dead. That's, not, that's what the scripture says. It was after his resurrection that he revealed that all authority in heaven and earth had been given to him. He was raised above every power and dominion, Ephesians chapter 1. Acts 20, I mean, um, Philippians 2, 8 through 10 reveals that it was after his resurrection that the name above every other name was conferred upon him because God the Father highly exalted him. So we ask, why was the name given? Was it invested with such vast authority and dominion? Why was it invested with such vast authority and dominion? Was it for himself? No. He'd already conquered Satan. There was no need for him to walk around with a name greater for himself. Satan had already been defeated by him. He had made a show of him. Yet after his resurrection, he's conferred, he's, uh, inherits, has bestowed, and receives by conquest the greater name. Why? What was the reason all that was done? He could have gone up to heaven, sat by the Father, and said, okay, Father, Daddy, I whooped him. He's defeated. And they just lived out in heaven forever. No, we whooped him. There won't going to be a rematch. Actually, there will be a rematch. Satan's loose from the pit after a thousand years. And then he really gets whooped one more time. Right before he's thrown into the pit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, during the period of almost 2,000 years that he's been at the Father's right hand, has he ever used or had need of using his own name? Nowhere do we see Jesus saying, in my name, do, this is done. Mm -hmm. There is no record of Jesus using his name in combat against the enemy. Hello? Every mention of scripture and the use of the name of Jesus has reference to his body. We're the body of Christ. That name was given to him that the church might use it. 
that the believers might use it. Yeah. Glory to God. That the born again army of God might use it. Yeah. See, we are here taking the place of the absent Christ, as it were, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, and we are giving that name to use by power of attorney, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, how that Kenyon was at a meeting doing a teaching and the lawyer came up and says, Dr. Kenyon said, uh, did Jesus give us power of attorney to use his name? He says, sir, you're a lawyer. I'm not. Tell me, did he give us the power of attorney to use his name? He said, if language means anything, he gave us power of attorney to use his name. So Dr. Kenyon said, well, sir, what does it? He said, what does that mean? He said, it depends on what's behind it. Well, glory to God. All of heaven, all of heaven's behind it. I said, all of heaven's behind it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I mean, God, the father, everything in heaven has stands behind the name. Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you, you can put a police officer out here in the street. And he can hold up his hand and say, stop in the name of the law. Well, we do know if you got a truck, if you got your big old Mack truck with 18 wheeler with it loaded down, um, that man don't stand a chance of stopping that truck. But the minute he opens his mouth and says, in the name of the law, stop. If you don't stop, everything behind the law comes on you full force. And they got tractor trailer rigs they run trucks off the road with. That happened back in the 70s when they started using CBs and do, you know, smoking the bandit stuff. They, they'd have a highway patrol tractor trailer drivers. And they'd be chasing down the road in the, in the cabs. With the sirens going off. Because they couldn't stop them with a car. We got a mighty convoy. And that's not a David Engel's song, by the way. <laughs> I know you're disappointed. Hallelujah. Um, and they, you know, they, you know but they, you could stop. You could stop a tractor trailer with a you know, car. <clears throat> but if you did not obey that officer and ran over that officer, you're going to go down the road down there. There's going to be guys sitting up at a road stop with, uh, with um, assault rifles, nail, uh, tack nails, and, and them, the, the odds of them taking you out are highly likely. You kill one of their, you kill one of their guys. Hello? All of that stood behind it. It wasn't that guy in the middle of the road saying it. Every bit of the force of justice stood behind it when he said stop in the name of the law. And it was going to come down to you with the full force if you disobeyed it. And now Jesus has come and risen and had a name uh, bestowed upon him, a name inherited, and a name he won by conquest. And when we speak it, what stands behind it? All of heaven. I said all of heaven. Praise God. Praise God. His angels are ministering spirits. Sent to serve the, the, uh, the, the children of righteousness, the heirs of righteousness. Glory to God. I'm telling you, angels are out there. Are you here? Now, we don't, I don't want to get too, I don't like to get too into much and some of that stuff because people get flaky. I had a roommate who saw an angel every, every three hours. There's my angel. He's against the wall. There's my angel. He's sitting over in a chair. That's my angel over here. That's, I'm thinking, my God, I ain't seen, I ain't even seen a feather fall. He's seeing angels every 25 seconds. Bless his heart. Stupid heart. Well, anyway, we'll leave that alone. The ones who have need of the use of that name are the ones who become joint heirs with him that are here in contact with men and women who are need deliverance from Satan. We see when Jesus walked the earth, he walked in authority over the forces of Satan. They had no, remember Jesus said this. He said, the enemy cometh, but he hath nothing in me. The enemy cometh, but he hath nothing in me. And see, now we can say, the enemy cometh, he hath nothing in me. And then Jesus would just speak words of, of deliverance and power, and things would change. Now, we can't just do that without using the name. Now, we had somebody come into church a couple of years, well, actually six years ago, more than six years ago, about six years because we were, in the, we were still in the business part. He said he was with some guy who went around praying with people and laid hands on them and said, sick or doodle. And they were getting healed. And he hadn't been back either. 
It ain't got nothing to do with snickerdoodles. As a matter of fact, I find it blasphemous. I had to correct that. No. Jesus said in my name. And he didn't say in snickerdoodle. My authority as a believer is vested by the power of the name. I have authority because of the name. That when I speak and my words are obeyed in the realm of the spirit, it's because of, my, of the name. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name. Amen. It's the name. There's authority in the name. I can exercise authority in the name. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Hello. In my name they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How? In my name. <laughs> the church has been vested with the authority to use the name. Glory to God. And so the, since he gained his name by inheritance, and all these done in that name, and that name is for man, God made this investment for the church. He made this deposit upon which the church has the right to draw for her every need. The name that has within it is the fullness of the Godhead, the wealth of the eternities, the authority over which every other power or authority known in heaven and earth and hell has been given to us. If you were to search heaven with all of its power and omnipotence, if you could search the dark regions of hell's domain and the dominion over mankind, you could search the whole world through. You'll not find a dominion, an authority, or any power greater than the name of Jesus. We have the right to use that name against our enemies. Amen. We have the right to use it in our petitions. We have the right to use it in our praise and worship. That name was given to him for us and is ours today. It has lost none of its power. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. That name. Hallelujah. Demons tremble. The forces of darkness are abated. Sickness has to flee. Poverty has to go. Amen. Oppression must cease. Now, we're getting stories out of the Ukraine you are not seeing in the news. Missionaries have contacted with relatives and so forth in the Ukraine. And here's one of the testimonies. The missiles are flying through the sky and disappearing and nobody, nobody knows where they went. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Now what some people don't know is um, back in the uh, early 90s, Mark Brzees, when he's, remember, I, you know, I was going over to the Demata schools of missions. I didn't make it to the Ukraine. I made it to Estonia and the Czech Republic. It was the furthest east in, in Eastern Europe I went. Um, and going to those schools. But um, they started doing missionary outreaches from Estonia into the Ukraine. And if I'm not mistaken, Rick Renner started his ministry in Europe in the Ukraine. Then moved to Moscow. Okay? There's a strong Pentecostal charismatic word of faith church. And I'm not talking about in one individual church. I'm talking about believers in Ukraine. And they're believing God and fighting. Miss, Miss Universe or whoever traded in her high heels for combat boots. She's out shooting the enemy. They got a picture of her as Miss Universe and they got a picture of full combat gear. She's on their homeland fighting. Well, what's, what's you, you know, that's all political stuff. You know, the Ukraine's corrupt. They threw that guy out. The people got him and threw him out of office and voted out the rest of his cronies and put in a, a, a non-corrupt government. That's God's judgment for the, you know, the corruption. No. The judgment was they threw the other guy out of office. 
But they're over there praying in the name of Jesus. And the Russians thought they were going to have a six-day war like, the, like Israel. You don't get those unless God's on your side. Are you here? You don't get six-day wars unless God's on your side. I still remember my friend Fawaz. Um, dear, my dear brother Fawaz. We call him the Jordanian Jew bomber. Because his dream in life as a child was to grow up, join the Jordanian Air Force, and go bomb the Jews. That's what Fawaz wanted to do. Then he got saved. It's amazing what happens when you get saved. You don't want to bomb the Jews anymore. And uh, he came to Ramah. They didn't let him in. And he hounded Dean Moffat, the dean of Ramah at the time, every day for two weeks. He'd come to his office every day and sit in his office and say, God told me I'm supposed to be here. They said, you didn't, we, didn't, we didn't accept you. You can't come here. And he'd come back every day. And finally, they said, <laughs> because of his persistence, they let him in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he, he, growing up, they would tell the stories of the war, how the, as they came up and they were coming to come over on a sneak attack to wipe Israel out. And when they got there, there were millions of soldiers on the dunes waiting for them. Israel only has 5 million people today. They're the, they're, their population is about North Carolina's. And they got there and there were millions of soldiers waiting for them. So much so that they ended up losing territory in the war. They were going to wipe Israel out and lost territory. And they're still mad about it. We need to go back to the free. You're the ones that invaded, not Israel. We need to go back to the pre-whatever lines, pre-1967 lines. Uh, it don't work that way. And come again and you'll lose more. Iran and Iraq will belong to them. You come again. Hello? Well, because there's power in the name. There's authority in that name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So how do we, how do we use that name? Jesus made promises of prayer. He said in John 16, up until this time, you've never prayed in my name. But now... Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Everybody say, wow. wow. Say it backwards. Wow. wow. Glory to God. How, most, how, how staggering of a statement that we have the use of his name, the name of omnipotence, and it does not, it didn't even say if you believe or if you have faith. It just said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it you. Now, I'm, I'm going to, I believe that, you know, faith is involved. But it, it just says, whatever you ask in my name, there's power in that name. I said, there's authority in that name. There's glorious power and authority in the name of Jesus. We were born into the family of God. The right and privilege of the use of the name of Jesus is ours. The name of Jesus, listen, it takes the place of the resurrected Christ being physically manifest among us, performing miracles, delivering from Satan's authority, and bringing God's power upon the scene. Hallelujah. We need to stop singing and reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by and just go over there and say, in the name of Jesus. Because we bring him on the scene. We bring his authority and power on the scene. When we do that, when we say, in the name of Jesus, it's just like Jesus is standing there saying those words himself. Most people don't believe that. Now, I'll be honest with you, that's the problem. They don't believe it. They're kind of like Luke with Yoda. You ask the impossible. You know, he told him to pull the, the X-wing fighter out of the pond there. And uh, he, he starts it, and he says, it's too big. He says, do, do, or do not. Do not try. Then he can't, and he says, you ask the impossible. And Yoda says, that is why you fail. Because he didn't believe. 
Actually, actually, a Yoda comes over and raises it up and puts it on the ground. And Luke goes, I don't believe it. That is why you fell. <laughs> you didn't believe it. We got Christians who don't believe in the power of the name of Jesus. They're not praying with authority. They're praying with a hope so. You hear it by their prayers. Father, if it be thy will. But if not, I mean, don't, don't, don't come right back and put them in the ground. Whatever your divine purpose is in this circumstance, we trust you to work it out for your glory. Shut up and do not pray for me. I don't want you praying for me. Well, you're arrogant. No. If, I want, if I'm trying to live and not die, I don't need people like that praying for me. Because <clears throat> you're not praying faith. And you're not using the name. You know I mean, you're about, to put a, you're about to conjure up devils on me. I spent my lifetime getting rid of devils around me, not bringing them on. Hello? And so we, we need to understand. That we got the name. We have the right to use the name. The name is all powerful. The name will cause demons to tremble. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when the Christ was with the disciples, they didn't need to use his name. He met every need. But when he left them, he said to them and sent them out and said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, he said, I say, uh, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than these, because I go into the Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. His works did not stop at the cross. As a matter of fact, they were to be multiplied. How? By the authority of the name in the hands of the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood-bought, blood-washed, blood-sustained church, praise God forever. When he was here on earth, he was limited by his body. And he could only be in one place at one time. Think about the universal body of Christ all over the world. <clears throat> Christ can be uh, healing people in Africa and in Kansas City at the same time Amen. by the power of his name. Are you here? You've gone home. Amen. Amen. He's really saying, you will take my place on earth. I'll be your representative in heaven. And whatever you ask in my name, I'll make it good. It will be as though, as though I were on earth asking of the Father. Glory to God. I don't think we even come close to having a grasp on that. I honestly don't. I think it's so mind staggering that we stand in awe of the thought that for me to say, in the name of Jesus... And then following that up with something is just like Jesus saying, I command such and such to take place. And every one of us in this room, if I walked up to you and said, do you believe if Jesus walked in here and somebody was, um, had no leg and, pray, and he said, leg grow, that leg grow. Oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We just don't believe this. We say in the name of Jesus it will happen. Because we see our shortcomings and our inabilities. But it's not about you. On either side of the equation. Are you here? I said, it's, it's not about us on either side of the equation. It's not about how great you are. And it's not about how low you are. It's about the authority in the name. That name carries the authority. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. Blessed be God forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Glory. Amen. All right. The heart of our conflict is with demonic forces. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Or literally, the Greek exercise authority over demons. Jesus fully equipped us for our place as the representatives of the ascended and seated Christ in heaven and gave us authority over everything on this planet that we would face 
and deal with to overcome. And it's in his name. I said it's in his name. Glory to God. And Kenyan states, oh, that our eyes would be open. That our souls would dare to rise into the realm of omnipotence. With that name, we mean all to us all that the Father invested in it. The, oh, my. I said, oh, my. For us to rise to the place of revelation and understanding in the use of that name. In the use of using that name as it was intended to stomp, to conquer, to overcome, to defeat the enemy at every turn and enforce the victory that Christ has won. Hallelujah. And to stand in that place free, free of guilt, free of fear, free from anything that would cause you to step back and to draw back and to press in, hallelujah, to the place that we were called to be, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Every once in a while we see somebody come along and they'll, and, and, and they'll just step into the edge of this experience of using the name of Jesus. But there must come a time on the earth in which the body at large steps into our place with such bold authority. Hallelujah. That demons are sending off gongs in hell and going, they're up again. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Battle stations. Yes. Like that John Wayne movie. Ding, ding, ding. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. Battle stations. Battle stations. Yeah, every time we get out of bed, the devil ought to be going battle stations. And this is not a drill. Because that bunch who knows who they are in Christ who knows the authority and the power of the name of Jesus are up and we're in for another rough day. They're even going around thanking God when we go to sleep. I'm glad you made it where these humans had to sleep. At least we get a break. Except we're going, God's going to raise them up with a 24-7 thing. All over the world, every time zone in the world, you got believers who are walking in authority, who are walking in that power, who are walking in that light. Hallelujah. As he is in the light. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Praise God forever. I said, praise God forever. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. All right. Let's look um, at our questions. We'll forget the three quarter of an hour thing. Why does the new creation need a weapon to use against Satan, the forces of Satan? Well, here's the answer. And I'm doing this so we can record it. And then you can go back and listen to it if you need to write it. Because we can't keep here and just let you go. Every other word, write it down. You'll get it on. You go back and watch the video. We are still in the world ruled by Satan. Satan and his forces still have an opportunity to attack the child of God through temptation and trials. The Father gave us a weapon to use in this combat with Satan. Not only for ourselves, but also for Satan ruled men around us. Hallelujah. They're going to be able to come. In the world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've, I've overcome the world. Amen. What's that mean? I've overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. First John 4, 4. Yeah. Amen? Whatsoever is born of God overcometh. Yeah. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even yeah. our faith. First John 5, 4. Amen? Glory to God. Number two, what is the threefold greatness of the name? There's authority in the very name of Jesus because he inherited his name, because he, was, he, he achieved the authority of his name by conquest, and because his name was conferred upon him by the Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? What authority is vested in the name of Jesus as a result of his conquest? All authority over Satan's dominion is invested in that name. <clears throat> the deliverance of man from sin, sickness, and any other satanic influence or power is invested in that name. Yes. How does the words of Luke 11, 21 and 22 show us a picture of Christ? When Christ arose from the dead, he not only had the keys of death and of hell, but he had the very armor of God in which Satan trusted. 
He had defeated the devil. He had defeated all of hell. And he stood before the three worlds, heaven, earth, and hell, as the undisputed victor over man's ancient destroyer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When was the greatness of Jesus' name conferred or bestowed upon him? After his resurrection and ascension. Does Jesus himself need to use the, his name? No. Nope. No. Very good. He rules creation with his word. He's, he exists in equality with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. By whom was the name given? Oh, I'm sorry. For whom? For whom was the name given? The church, his body. Why? For the church to draw on it for her every need. Glory to God. What is deposited in that name? The name has within it the fullness of the Godhead, the wealth of the eternities, and the authority over every other power and authority known in heaven, earth, and hell. And then how may, how may we use the name of Jesus? Anyone who has been born into the family of God has the right to use the name of Jesus. Anyone. Well, I've been saved six minutes. You've got the right. You're a believer. I said, you're a believer. And the number 10, if you look at that, it says, uh, what possibilities for your own growth do you see in this lesson? That's, that's all personal answers. I mean, when you look at that, how can I grow? What, what is there in that that makes me grow? What, what can I do that, that will help me grow as a believer? Praise God. And um, that's all personal answers you would come up with. All right? That's not a set, pat answer. That's because that was a, it was not asked that way. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good stuff? All right. Let's see here. Next week, we move into... Two. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what, guys? Make sure I didn't skip a lesson in here. No, I didn't. I, that's right. 21. Yeah, the, the, the um, actually, the index does not match the book. Like, how did that happen? And um, there was a printer's error, obviously. I'm trying to find out what happened there. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like there's a print. Yeah. They called it identification with Christ two times in a row. That's what it was. That, that's why I'm thinking, I didn't do, do identification with Christ. I mean, uh, God's two creations, but we did. Last week, last week, they misprinted and named both chapters, 21 and 22, the same thing. I'm just looking at that right now. So next week will be lesson 24, and we'll be going into the word God's revelation. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, God's revelation to man. Hallelujah. Well, how many of you love Jesus? How many glad you got used to the power of the name? Thank God for the name. Amen. Um, well, it's time to give. If you're watching by um, internet, uh, you can go ahead and pull up um, Cash App or PayPal. Cash App is uh, dollar sign Faith Victory Church. We've not yet made it... Uh, legally official in the um, in some realms and so uh, we're aka as an expedition church but um, we have to leave some of these things as they are until we make a legal change with the secretary of state and all that kind of stuff and that's a process okay and we could have waited and done all that and then it revealed the name but we just like let's get that name out there hallelujah and uh, they're having so much fun uh, marketing with that name with the new name and stuff yep Praise God. Uh, dean uh, Marvin Yoder is coming. Now, uh, he's the former, one of the former deans of Raymond Bible Training Center in Tulsa. 
a good brother, uh, grew up Amish. I mean, his 90-year-old dad just died, or 94-year-old dad, I forgot which it was, just died, still wearing the blue shirts and the hat and the beard and stuff. And, uh, but Brother Marvin's a, a, a wonderful uh, minister of the gospel and former dean and instructor at Rama. And um, um, love him and love his ministry. And so he, he called, he uh, texted last week and said he's going to be up in Elkin at a church up in that area and ask if we'd be open to having him come. And we said, sure, we'd be honored to have you. So uh, we're planning on having him on May 25th. It's a Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, it'll be light outside by then. Praise the Lord. You'll want, you want to hear him. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a quality minister. And uh, we look forward to having him. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. And if you get you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Brother Joe's got, or they're on the seat backs in front of you. You can grab an envelope off a seat back in front of you. We don't even have to wait, get Brother Joe to pull them out. We got them out on the chairs. Hallelujah. Our new Expedition Church envelopes. Glory to God. Still write your checks to FBC, though. Okay. But they do look cool, don't they? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Square Cash app, uh, you know, you can go ahead and send it that way. Uh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the people as they tithe and give. We thank you open heaven's windows and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Joe, go ahead and receive that. Hallelujah. Um, <coughs> we were in the storage unit yesterday. There we go. We were at storage unit yesterday and um, found the banner that rolled out when we got debt free. Oh. Hallelujah. And I said, Joe, I mean, I said, yeah, unroll that for Jerry. And uh, hallelujah, and the debt free thermometer with the top blowing off, debt free, and all that stuff. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. So, amen. Isn't that cool? So, I'm, I'm sure we're going to find some other stuff over there, too. <laughs> know what we're gonna find something all right you belong here how many are glad how many believe you belong here Amen. oh my goodness hallelujah i can't even run y'all out of the building anymore <laughs> you know not that we're trying to but you know we like they like hanging around the other place we'd say who wants to help break down and y'all were gone <laughs> they, they, pass i'll see you next time now, now i'm picking on y'all now i'm just messing with you i mean uh, yep and I know this man right here just thinks about it every time he comes to church. I don't have to break it down. I don't have to set it up. We don't have to move chairs. There ain't nothing we got to do. Just tinker with it. We come a tinker. Yeah. Tinkering is more fun than setting up, isn't it? It is. I can do that. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, Rita? Am I going you wrong? Rita wrote a... Rita. I, I want, I, it's like I keep wanting to say it wrong. I know I do. Good to see you. Good to see the rest of y'all. We're glad y'all are here. This is so much more fun than sitting in front of that microphone and that camera and doing that. This is so much more. Oh, at home. Yeah, this is so much more fun. And then blue barking in the background. <laughs> blue, shut up. He's a blue tick coon hound. He hunts. And he don't have any uh, coon or uh, squirrel or anything running through the yard. So he hunts people out the front gate. <laughs> they walk by on the street and he runs from one side of the house to the other to bark at them. <laughs> then he goes up and gets in the playhouse that the kids had and gets up on the deck because he can see better. Oh, gosh. He sounds like, sound like a human. His back <laughs> legs are straight. You guys aren't. He's like, <laughs> Blue, shut up. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Oh, well, you get a hunting hound, and that's what happens. Yeah. And then when Dixie was there with us, and she would uh, she'd go up there with him and go, boop, 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 with a little beagle bark. <laughs> you know, and they'd get out and get out there and do it together. She, she'd look at him and say, what, now, what are you supposed to do? You're the big guy. Show me how it's done. <laughs> and then she'd join in. They're like, oh. And you could hear, I mean, uh, we listened to some of the services. You could hear it in the background. Them, oh, yeah. Yep, hallelujah. All right, everybody stand up. Greet somebody, tell them you love them, bless them. Uh, have we already gotten off air? Oh, we had not gotten off air? 
Love you. God bless you. Join us Sunday as we continue teaching on redeemed from poverty, sick, uh, spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. Until then, remember these words. First John chapter 5, verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See you uh, this coming Sunday here at Expedition Church in person and online. Love you. God bless you.